Welcome back to the channel and today we've got a two your knives double header. We're going to get started first with the two your knives shocker. This particular one is the full DLC version. It's a nice medium size EDC knife at 7.1 inches with a 3.1 inch clip point blade of CPM 20 CV steel. You got a nice top swedge that kind of thins out the tip a little bit but you still have a pretty robust tip if you needed to do some piercing or poke and prodding. And it's a nice low tip here that's about, I'd say it's a little bit above the center line of the pivot. So you can use that tip, but you're just gonna have to come up a little bit higher or you could just use this belly, whatever you choose. You have a good sharpening choil, looks like, well, I don't know, it's hard for me to tell. Maybe right on that plunge, but I won't know that until I sharpen. But I would think you might be able to get one sharpen for the flare. If, if it does, I could always open that up. The jimping on this knife is outstanding. See that right there? It is not rounded over at all, and it grabs the hand, it grabs the finger very, very fast. It's not uncomfortable and it kind of ramps up right there. So you're super locked in when you're back here. Or if you don't want to use the jimping, you can overshoot it. You have a blade hole, we'll talk about that later. This knife came with a deep hollow grind on it that comes down to around 17 thousandths behind the thinnest portion. And it's gonna remain thin good ways up there. So I'm pretty excited to see how this one slices. Let's find out. Right away, I noticed this thing slicing outstanding. And I kind of figured that because this thing has a nice deep, deep hollow grind. It came wicked, wicked sharp, and man, it's, it's just, it's really, really slicing well. Um, it was slicing so well that after I finished the normal two sheets of cardboard, I threw one more of the larger piece in there just because I wanted to. It was fun. But I wish more companies would start, you know, grinding the pocket knives made to cut or choose a side. If you want it to be hard use, make it hard use, but not in the middle. <laughs> Uh, now we're testing the ergos. I was kind of worried that my finger might land on the little hump on the scale, but mine actually fits perfect behind it. Those contoured scales were comfortable. And I'm putting extra pressure in here because I know Jared from these knives had a lock failure on his. I'm trying to see if I can get any movement out of the lock on mine. I don't really expect it to because my lock bar pressure is pretty, uh, pretty good on this. You can usually tell by the way it sounds. It's usually like a muffled sound. You can still use that tip. You do have to raise your hand up a little bit higher or you can just use that belly, whichever one's easier for you, but it's a little scalpel up there in the front. The actual tip has a little bit of uh, extra meat there if you need to do some poke and prodding. But man, it's performing outstanding. I will say that the, the DLC finish Caused a little bit of drag on the tubing, but other than that, couldn't be more happy with the way this one's going. Uh, blasting through the 10 ounce denim, absolutely no problem there. That belly's perfect for cutting on the flat surface. And this is not the easiest for me to do right now. I got that cut on the end of my thumb, so I'm having to hold it in a funny manner. Got a large blister on my index finger from doing so many of these tests. And we're still getting through it, guys. We're gonna <coughs> doing it for you guys so we can just make sure that everything's sound on the knife. Especially, like I said, I want, I'm want i trying to tweak this one every which way just so I can make sure it's solid. I don't want to have any failures. And, you know, if if that is the case, I'll, I'll have to bring it back to, to you. But so far, so good. It's blasting through this sisal rope. It's always a pleasure when you got a nice thin grind and doing this. And Tuya leaves their edges nice and toothy. I That's the way I sharpen mine. So, man, it's nice. We end up cutting 110 cuts before I run out of the, the piece I cut. Felt really, really good. And it still feels like it has a good factory edge on it. Can't wait to sharpen this one up. Make it even sharper. Make it last even longer. But for a factory edge, I think it's outstanding. Tuya has been really, really killing it here lately. And hopefully that only gets better. And I, yeah, I know, like I said, I know Jared had a bad one, but every company has a limit. I have, I've had a, a bad knife literally from every company that I've ever bought from. 
Now we're taking a look at the deployment and action of this knife. It has a thumb hole for deployment. That works outstanding for the reverse flick. I can usually do the thumb flick. Let's see. I can do it left-handed. I got a gimp thumb right now. And you can reverse flick as long as you keep your finger off that lock bar. Nice and smooth action. Nice and positive break on that detent. Fairly drop shut. It's getting smoother and smoother as I use it and carry it. But very nice action. Take a look at these scales. You have contour titanium scales. I have the black one. I'm pretty sure that the scales are PVD coated. Blade is DLC. And then I'm sure the backspacer is PVD as well. You had some little milling right here for just some added aesthetic there. And then chamfer right there. This one has a chamfer going all the way around it. And during the cutting, I was worried that my finger would land on here. But my medium sized hand, my finger lands perfectly back here and then this one's right in front of that so i was ni nice and locked in it was very comfortable no hot spots that i noticed your pivot is a torx t8 unfortunately they went with a t6 for the body screws you do have a mill titanium pocket clip that's blind screwed meaning a screw from the inside you have a geared titanium backspacer that is raised a little bit and you have the designer's logo right there sd knives the mill clip works pretty good. You don't have a whole bunch of ramp underneath there, but as long as you don't have super thick pants, it should be fine. I did have a pair of thick shorts I was wearing this with. I just had to deal like that. But other than that, all my other stuff fit nicely. It is tip up, right hand carry only. I don't know what all these designers have against the lefties here, people. Lock up of my knife, I'd say it's sitting around 50, maybe even 60%. Access to the lock bar, even though this is flush, the little chamfers right there are easy enough for me to get my finger in there. Nice and positive engagement. You have a hardened stainless steel lock insert and an over travel combined. Now, I tested this one pretty hard because of uh, Jared Neves knives failing on him. I have not had any loosening of my lock bar at all, so hopefully his was just a lemon. If anybody else has had some kind of problem like that with theirs, you can definitely let us know down in the comments. But, you know, I, I'm hoping it's just, it was a lemon. That happens. Carries nice and light in the pocket, coming in at 3.62 ounces. Nice. They were able to keep the weight down with not just the contouring and the milling out here, but they also have heavy pocketing in there on the top and bottom. Nicely done. Also perfectly balanced making it light and nimble in the hand. Now for some quick size comparisons, we got the Ontario Wrap 1 and 2, Spyderco PM2 and Power 3, and very similar in overall length to the CJRB Alt Pyrite and the Hogue Deca. Now for my nitpicks and complaints, I don't really have much, just uh, maybe a little bit better ramp on the pocket clip. No lefty love here, and this looks a little thin right here, but I think it's because they got a chamfer. And this isn't a hard use knife, so you shouldn't be hitting on the top of this, but you know, just something to point out. Other than that, mine locked up, stayed locked up nice and tight. I love the ergos. I love that jimping. I love how slicey this one is. It held up really, really well through all the testing, and it was a fun one to test. So now, the price is a little bit high on this one as well. It comes in at $295 for the DLC version, or you can get non-DLC for $285. So, you know, that's uh, when it comes to those prices, it's going to have to be what you're comfortable spending. But, you know, if you love the design, I think you'll love it overall, and I could definitely recommend it if, you know, you're okay with that price. Next, we have the Tuya Knives Wrath V2. I reviewed the V1 back on the channel. A while back and I absolutely love this knife my only complaint and it was you know I could have chosen a different one but was the scales were a, a little rough for my hands probably not the average person's hands and this clip was sitting on that texture so it becomes a pocket destroyer but man that deep hollow ground S90V blade was absolutely excellent and I did notice that these thumb studs are a little bit slick. They're not terrible, but, you know, they definitely could have been fixed a little bit. And the fl front flipper tab is pretty high up there. Now, it does allow you to keep your thumb on it to do the full motion around. And the pocket clip 
on this one is pretty strong. But they seem to have fixed all that stuff with the V2, making this one even better than the one I already loved. Still got that same deep hollow grind. This time I got the DLC blade, which now is my favorite finish on a blade because I've done some crazy stuff with the DLC finishes and <laughs> you can't even tell I used this one. I did all the normal testing with this and the shocker. Wish we'd get one of the companies to make the DLC blade and all DLC handle to match, but it still looks nice. And I will say the DLC, whenever you're putting your finger on the crown spine trying to push down, it does give you a little bit of added traction. That said, whenever I cut through like the tubing and stuff like that, it did cause it to cause a little bit of drag. Not bad, but just something to note there. On the V2, they fixed everything that I didn't so much care for on the V1. Now, instead of uh, the textures, I think you got one texture, but it looks like it'd be nice and comfy. They have an uh, inlay version with carbon fiber inlays, and they have one with an orange peel finish. I think mine might have orange peel underneath it. That's what it looks like. If you look closely, hopefully you can see that. It's like mine had an orange peel and then they did the coating to that way it, it bonds a lot better than the titanium. But they fixed that high front flipper tab as you can see there. Then they also, instead of this little notch right here, they, they kind of kept that around. So you can still keep your thumb on there nicely and you don't have such a high front flipper sticking up. A huge change that I thought was great is they fixed the, the thumb studs. See, these are just kind of plain Jane. You got two little milled lines. Well, these have a step, like a volcano step going down, and these are perfect. At first, when I first grabbed them, I was like, ooh, that's sharp. But it, it grabs a hold of the thumb, and it's not uncomfortable, and you can easily flip it out. Yeah, I love these. Now, if the detent was too strong to break it, <laughs> then that would become uncomfortable. But it, other than that, it's great. These smooth scales are comfortable for my hands, very comfortable. They fixed the pocket clip. I don't know if they what they did to thin it out or whatever they did, but it's it's got more flex to it. it. Goes in and out of the pocket a lot better. Now this one as well, you don't have a huge ramp underneath there. So if you're wearing thick pants, it may you may have to pull it up some. I didn't have that problem, but you know. I didn't wear any thick pants with this. The weight on it's good. And overall, I think they nailed it for the V2. So if you haven't already picked up the V1, but you like this overall design, I would definitely go with the V2. I don't even know if there's any V1s left, but the V2, like I said, just fine tuned all the little, little things that I would have liked to see on this one. They did it on this one. I just realized too, on the V1, you don't have, you don't have the crown spine. It's just a flat spine. You can see, hopefully you can see that the V2 has a nice crown spine, even going into that jimping. And even with the, the, the crowning all the way through the jimping right here, it's still nice and grippy. This one was too. This one's like super grippy. I'll tell you what. Tuya does outstanding job with their jumping. But yeah, A++, definitely, definitely can recommend the Tuya Knives Wrath V2 and the Tuya Knives Shocker. Two absolutely stunning knives. And if you're interested in either one of these, I will have them linked down below. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave those down below. I'll try to get to them if possible. And I hope everybody's having an absolute, absolute amazing day. I will see y'all on the next one. Peace.